Lord, I just thank you so much for this morning. I thank you that we can have that closer walk with thee. And Lord, I just, uh, I just want to pray uh, just for the words that you have given me, uh, that they're going to be concise. Uh, and Lord, that it's through you. <laughs> it's not about me, but it's about what you've laid on my heart. So Lord, I just pray that right now, during this time, that uh, hearts are touched and, uh, and that we can learn something from this and that we can just have that closer walk with thee. We just thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church family. A <laughs> uh, little bit out of my element here, amen? I'm, I'm usually on the stage here, but not quite in this capacity. If I break out in song, bear with me. <laughs> Just bear with me. Uh, I am Jeff Wilcox. I'm one of the elders here. And Pastor Kevin and Pastor Joe Lazurk, when they were here, said, Jeff, you've got a, me- you've got a word. You've got a message. You've got to give a message. And, and, you know, and I just want to, in preparing this, I've had two months to prepare this now. <laughs> so I have definitely grown in appreciation to Pastor Joe Lazurk, Pastor Kevin, uh, Lynn, and Chip uh, for preparing a message like this. Now, all of you are my friends. At least I hope you are all out there. And, and so my family, every one of them said, Dad, you're going to be okay. Everybody likes you there. <laughs> so, you know, if you stumble and fall a little bit, that's okay. We're going lift, to lift you up. But I certainly have grown an appreciation of the, the time that it takes to, to put a word together. Um, so if I break out in a song, that's okay. That's going to be my comfort level. <laughs> so... But just, a, and I do have a, a, not a verse here, but a song of God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah. God is on the move, on the move today. And I believe that's where our church is. You know, God is on the move here. Amen? All right. Well, let's get started here. <clears throat> I'm going to, uh, I've got a six-point message. Uh, I don't know what, what the, yeah, I know. We're, yeah, hang on, hang on. If you, if you need to go get a coffee now, go ahead. I'll try to keep you awake, uh, but I do have a six-point message, and uh, <laughs> let's get started here. Um, I'm going to talk about the Holy Spirit, because I, I kind of feel like I just need to, to clear the air here with our church and with the Holy Spirit. And so let's just read in Matthew 18, verse 18, 19, and 20, and it says, Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. So, there we have it. When we come to church, I'm looking out at all the congregation here, and I believe that all of you have the Holy Spirit in you. And sometimes we sing a song. I, you know, obviously as a praise and worship leader, sometimes we 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 get a lot of not not a lot of criticism. I, I mean, I just am so thankful for the church. Usually, I get lots of encouragement. But sometimes some of the songs we sing. Um, For example, the lyrics to Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Uh, There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing compares. You are living hope. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love where my heart becomes free and my shame is done. Your presence, Lord. So uh, it's kind of like we're uh, inviting the Holy Spirit in with us. But uh, somebody said it's kind of like we're begging the Holy Spirit. But Jeff, look at this verse. It's where two or three are gathered. He's already here. Well, well, let me give you an example. Um, 30 years ago, uh, I graduated from Bloomsburg University. I was a teacher. Uh, I got a job up at Northern Potter. And when you're a teacher, as Greg knows, as you, <laughs> you, not only are you the teacher, but you are penciled in for head coach. <laughs> I was penciled in for head coach for uh, girls track in the spring and boys soccer in the fall. Now... I graduated from Countersport. I played football at Countersport. I know football. I don't even know what a soccer ball is blown up with. But I went up there anyway. Fortunately, I had a good friend that was a soccer coach in college, and I actually helped him a little bit more of the training. So he helped me with soccer at Northern Potter. It was a blessing because I had the greatest soccer players in the world up at Northern Pirate. Just a great group of kids. First year, we were over 500. And this was back in the day that if you didn't win the league, you didn't go to districts. The second year, um, we were undefeated. And I had two brothers. Jerry probably knows who I'm going to be talking about. I'm not going to name names. But I had two brothers. One was a senior. One was a junior. The senior was so gifted. The brother, 
he would score a goal a game for me. Um, but the problem with is that his, his real passion was basketball. When he was out on the soccer field, eh, he was okay. He, he'd do his thing, score a goal, and yeah, it was okay. His brother, on the other hand, was tremendous. Uh, he had a heart that he just would lay it all out in the field at all times. He wasn't quite as talented, but, but you could know that he was going to give you 110% all the time. The difference, I believe, is their heart. Uh, his heart was in soccer. His brother was just talented, but his brother, his heart was really in basketball. So no big deal. But I think that's kind of with the Holy Spirit. If we look in Luke 8.16, it says, No one lights a lamp and hides it in a clay jar or puts it under a bed. Instead, they put it on a stand so that those who come in can see the light. For there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed and nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out in the open. And, and I believe, you know, we sing a song, I am the light of the world, I am the city on the hill. I believe that's what the Holy Spirit in us, we need to let the light shine. We need to have our heart uh, exposed so that we can give 110% all the time. I believe that's also where our district is going. Uh, I was down at the uh, district prayer conference with Kevin, Pastor Kevin, and if you look at that, uh, a lot of the district leaders that talk about counter sport, they didn't talk really about it there, but it's like, oh, we got to go up and give a message at counter sport? Yes, let's go. We want to go. Because they feel like our church is alive. Our church is going that direction. Uh, we have the pastors in Nyack College that are doing uh, the healing. Um, and and uh, that, that adventure is, you know, Holy Spirit driven. Holy Spirit driven. And so that's where we got to go. You know, the Holy Spirit, uh, it can fall down on us in a flash of lightning. But it also can come in a hushed voice, you know, in a whisper. And I think it's all in how we just got to let it come and let our inhibitions out so that the Holy Spirit can just uh, control us. Amen? Amen. So that's, that's point number one. We're going to keep on walking here and... Uh, just let the Holy Spirit guide us. Sunday mornings. When I was a kid, uh, I enjoyed the, the cartoons. My dad would always get the Sunday newspaper. And this is the family circus. If you can see, I don't know how, how clear it is. That's little Billy right there. Little Billy says, let's go for a walk, Granddad. And of course, you look at the walk there. Granddad's walking the straight and narrow there. And Billy's all over the place. And it says, I'm tired, Granddad. Carry me. <laughs> I think if, if all of you have grandkids, you know where I'm going. I've, you can see mine right there. And uh, so that's where we're going to start. I'm just praying that my message is, is concise and that we're going to uh, walk in a straight path here. We are going to start in the beginning. Let's go right in the beginning. We're going to go in Genesis 1, verses 1 and 2. In the beginning, God. I can stop right there, couldn't I? Four words. In the beginning, God. But I'll continue. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Can you imagine having been back there at that time when, when the earth and the heavens were formed? And, and just, just following God, or just as in the picture with Billy, in his arms watching him form the whole thing? Yeah, I've heard it said that science tries to disprove God but God proved science. Think about it. Science tries to disprove God, but God proved science. Uh, <laughs> so I think we've got to have that belief. I know, I think you all know Ken Ham, the creation scientist, and uh, he has uh, Noah's Ark, I believe, in Kentucky. And his famous quote is, you know, when, when people are talking about creation and, and you know, how it really couldn't have happened, and, and Ken Ham's famous uh, saying is, well, were you there? Were you there when it happened? <laughs> I also had heard another scientist put it this way. Um, if you kind of disputing the Big Bang Theory. Now, I guess God could have brought the world into, into creation with, with explosions. I don't know. We weren't there, correct? But he, he, he explains about having a, a 747 graveyard. And you've got parts and pieces everywhere. And they set off this giant explosion. 
And when all the dust settles and, and all the smoke fades away, you've got this pristine looking 747. I'm embellishing here a little bit. People are on board already. Uh, the attendants are giving them breakfast. The pilots are getting all ready to, to fly to Hawaii, right, with today's weather. And, and that's kind of his, his idea of you know, how can a Big Bang Theory happen when explosions are, uh, they, they destroy things. They don't form things, they destroy things. So that's our first thing. We've got to have faith that God created the world, that God created the universe. So that's point, I'm on number one now. Point number one was all by itself. So we're going to go to point number two. So God created the earth. We're still in Genesis. We'll, we'll get through. We'll get through. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers are not playing today. <laughs> so we, we could spend the whole morning here. In Genesis 3, verse 8. It says, Then man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Now I'm going to stop right at the cool of the day and do a little side note here. The cool of the day, to me, speaks about when is my best time with God. You know, in the cool of the day, I'm a morning guy. If I get up and uh, I feel like God is going to be walking with me in the cool of the day, in the morning... And that, I believe that's what in the cool of the day said. Of course, cool of the day, some people are night owls, and it does cool down at night, too. Although it does say day here. So I'm not going to get into details here. But for me, you know, my question is for you. you know, when is your time with God? For me, it's in the cool of the day. So well, let's continue. So he's in the cool, walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Of course, we're speaking about Adam and Eve. Um, I heard it say that it, it wasn't the apple that caused sin. It was the pear on the ground. Yeah, let that sink in. <laughs> anyway, uh, I didn't need an Ian, Ian on the drums up there. <laughs> so... Here. We are going to continue. <clears throat> but, you know, Adam and Eve did not hide from God because God it was there. He's all knowing. And these are, there's three words here that I want to go over with you. And <clears throat> there's the three O's. I call them the three O's. We are omnipotent, God is omniscient. And God is omnipresent. Now we serve a sovereign God, a sovereign God, you know, who, who is over everything. But I love these words, Kevin. You know, I, I can just see that, okay, one up on Jeff, because, you know, Kevin had this magnificent word that he tried to pr you know, pronounce last week. So I, I'm kind of a, a technical guy or a, uh, a guy that looks at a word and I look at omnipotent. And it's like, no, it's not omnipotent, it's, it's omnipotent. Uh, but anyway, omnipotent is almighty, unlimited authority and power. That's our God. Our God is also omniscient. He knows all, and he has complete knowledge. And our God is omnipresent. And obviously omnipresent, he is in, in, in all places at all time. So we can't hide from God. We cannot hide from God. You know, Adam and Eve were in the garden. Of course, that's in the very beginning. I, I kind of chuckle at that, that you know, he, they were trying to hide from him. But... Uh, we just can't. So my question is, you know, what is in your life? You know, now when I'm pointing at you, I'm also pointing at myself too. You know, it's not like I get up like Chip said. You know, he got up this morning and things just weren't all together right. And that's okay. We do that. But it's just where we know that God is in our presence and we just have to know that and know that he is in control of us. So, so that is my second message. We're going to go skip from Exodus. Now we're going to go from uh, Genesis. Now we're going to exit, go into Exodus. And in Exodus 34, verse 29, it says, When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the cover in his hands, he was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. You know, we're walking with God here. We're walking with the, knowing that he, we have faith that he created heavens and earth. And we've got to know that we cannot hide from him, that we've got to walk in the cool of the morning. But now, 
what we have to do is we have to show God's glory. You know, Moses went up in the mountain. He came down because he was in the presence of the Lord and he shone. His face shone with glory. As a matter of fact, Aaron and all the Israelites were, were actually afraid of him, looking at him, seeing the, the radiance on his face. And I'm going to kind of relay this uh, to uh, us when we're, we're out in the world with the Holy Spirit in our hearts and when we're going from place to place. Um, I... I, told, I asked Pam if I could share kind of a story with her, and I'm going to also share another story with somebody else here. But this is kind of my story with Pam. Uh, I, I'm making this up a little bit, Carl, but you maybe can verify it afterwards. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm visualizing, this happens in my house. You know, Carl's sitting there, Pam's cooking a wonderful dinner, and all of a sudden Pam realizes, oh, I forgot something. i got to go to the store. Well, Pam goes to the store. When Pam goes to the store, I bet... She doesn't take five minutes. <laughs> and why? For me, and for what I think, I think Pam radiates God. She shines when she goes there. She shared with me stories going to shop and save her causes that, that people search her out to pray. People that sometimes she doesn't know. They just kind of know her through a friend, through another friend that, that maybe was sick through hospice or what have you. And they search her out. So we got poor Carl back at home, <laughs> waiting for dinner, and a half an hour later, Pam's home. Of course, my kids tell me about that too. When mom sends me out, it kind of happens also. But I think, <laughs> I can honestly tell you that when I've gone to the store before, I've gone to aisle three because I've seen somebody in aisle four that I didn't want to see. <laughs> Have you been there? <laughs> and that's part of grieving the Holy Spirit. I've got to be more aware of that, and, and I know that in myself, that that's grieving the Holy Spirit. But I don't believe, and, and maybe Pam's been in a hurry sometimes, and she's done that. We're not all perfect, uh, but that's grieving the Holy Spirit. But, you know, we just need to shine. We need to have that radiance. We need to have that draw so that people are drawn to us like they were drawn to Jesus in Jesus' time. So, the other one that I want to share, I've got to grab a drink here real quick. is my beautiful wife. <laughs> she wasn't called Mother Teresa for nothing. <laughs> uh, she just had a dear, dear friend pass away with cancer, Aaron McEwen. And uh, Teresa would go up and visit with her quite often. Um, and when some people went up there, you know, they kind of wanted to pray for Aaron. Uh, she, Teresa would tell me that, that people, when they went up to see somebody who was sick, they, they kind of had their own agenda. You know, they went up, it's like, well, I'm going to pray for Aaron. I'm going to kind of clean up the house a little bit. I'm kind of going to do this. And, uh, but for my wife, it, it wasn't about you know, what, what her agenda was. It was about what she wanted Aaron's agenda to be. Teresa said that you know, they would go up there and she would just take Aaron's hand and Aaron would just look at Teresa, just look in her eyes and, and see the hope that, that Teresa was giving her. And uh, Aaron would actually talk about what she was going to do when she got better, when God was going to heal her. And Teresa just let her talk, and, and they would share with each other. And then after she would leave, when Teresa would come home, she'd kind of share with me a little bit, and, and she was totally exhausted because she was kind of letting the spirit, her spirit work within her heart to share with Aaron, and, and just uh, she just needed refueled, and and I you know I, I, you know the radiance of God for Pam for my wife you know and as I look out again here on, on our congregation I know we have it with all of us here uh, it's tugging on my heartstrings here a little bit talking about Pam and about my wife but uh, uh, that's who I am <laughs> so we've got to show that radiance that radiance of God let's move on we're going to go in Daniel. Uh, Daniel is one of my favorite, uh, favorite books in the whole Bible. Um, it's a great character study for young people, uh, obviously with Daniel, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Um, let me talk about King Nebuchadnezzar first. Uh, king Nebuchadnezzar was the, the king, I kind of call him the God King. Uh, you know, if, if you were in his court, and you were beside King Nebuchadnezzar and you kind of crossed him, he could just have you killed for no reason at all. 
or he could promote you. You know, he promoted the Israelites, the young men, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And uh, that was just who he was. He could do what he would, what he wanted to. So kind of like, you know, I, I look at a lot of sports guys kind of that way too. Got a story for you. There's two soccer players. Um, we have uh, Lionel Messi. He's of Argentina. And we have Cristiano Ronaldo of Portugal. Now, if you ever YouTube these guys, they are awesome soccer players. They, I was watching the YouTube, and you know, they'll, they'll have the ball right there. They'll, they'll turn their back, like this, turn around, kick the ball from 40 yards, and they'll hit, hit the top crossbar um, with, with the soccer ball. These guys are talented. But they are also very competitive. Lionel Messi, there was an interviewer, and uh, they were interviewing Cristiano. And the interviewer said, so, what do you think your purpose is here on earth? And Cristiano Ronaldo answers, God sent me into the world to show people how soccer is to be played correctly. <laughs> yeah, kind of a you know, pretty, pretty proud guy. Then another guy was, or another announcer, another interviewer was uh, interviewing Lionel Messi. And Lionel said, uh, the interviewer asked him, what do you think of Cristiano Ronaldo's comment that God sent him into the world to show people how soccer is played? Messi kind of sat there for a moment, was thinking, hmm, he said, I honestly don't remember sending him. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's King Nebuchadnezzar right there all through. Anyway, my next point, Daniel. Uh, this is actually Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, verse 3, verse 25. Nebuchadnezzar had a great big idol. Everybody at the sound of the tambourines and all the plane, everybody had to bow down to that. And of course, we got Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego not doing that because the Lord their God was the Lord their God. He was so mad that, of course, he wanted to put them into the fiery furnace. And the fiery furnace was so hot that even the guards that put them into the fiery furnace died. But not Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, correct? He says, he said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed. And the fourth looks like the son of the gods. And a lot of people will say that that fourth person could have been Jesus Christ, uh, walking with them and protecting them. And that's my first, first, fourth point, is that God is here to protect us. He is here. Whenever we are in the fire, God is there. <laughs> You know, I can think of, of many times that, that I've been in the fire and, and God has been there. And this is not, not the toughest part of my message yet. But, uh, but if you are in the fire, uh, you know, God is there. So we've got God walking in the beginning. We've got God walking in the cool of the morning. And the three O's, he's omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. And we've got number three, our face should shine so that we can draw people to us. And that would be shine like Moses. And we've got God, the fourth point, who is walking with us in times of danger, protection. And we've got to have faith that he is there. Amen. <clears throat> this is a, a, a tough one that, that I'm going to talk about now. And yeah, a tough one for me. That's kind of, I've got a lot of Bible verses to read here. This is in Mark and we are at verses um, 25 through 26. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all that she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touched his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? Isn't that kind of ironic that you know, Jesus didn't even know who touched his clothes? I believe he did, but let's just read on. You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, Who touched me? 
Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, trembling with fear, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. I believe that Jesus knew who touched him because he's omniscient, omnipotent. But I think he was wanting that daughter to come up to him to say, yes, it, it was me. It was me. No, we've got a God that is a healer. And uh, it is... Uh, Definitely something that has touched my life personally. <clears throat> you know, in my family, we have a uh, little uh, sibling rivalry. Um, I brought a prop, Lynn. <laughs> and, and if you looked at this prop, it says, I love you, Dad, and I'm sorry your other kids aren't as awesome as me. <laughs> Dad, smug, a gift from your favorite child. That was from Jay. When, when we got that mug, of course, Teresa and I immediately took advantage of it. We took a picture of it, put it on Facebook. My Marissa, my oldest daughter, said, game on. <laughs> and, 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 you know, obviously when the kids are little, it's a little bit different with the child rivalry. But, but now it, it's uh, advantage mom and dad. <laughs> We've gotten a trip to London. Teresa actually got a trip to London twice. We've been out to California. Uh, of course, down to Baltimore. Well, Baltimore is not that great, but <laughs> uh, but 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 it is game on. So, but the, the story I wanted to share with you is uh, is my son Jay. Um, my kids will say, "Yes, he is your favorite dad." I said, "No, he's not." You know. <laughs> my mind where I was going here. <laughs> I'm going to talk about the call. You know, we all have our phones uh, by our beds, and uh, we get lots of calls during the day, uh, but the one call you don't want to get is the one at night, and because uh, nine times out of ten, it's not a good call. Uh, I can remember uh, sometimes I'll be playing music at night, and I, I found this great praise and worship song, and uh, it's like, oh, I got to send this is when Pastor Joe Lazurik and Joe Gerhardt were, were, were here, both of them. And it's like, oh, I got to send this to him. It's like 1130 at night. So I, so I texted this song. The next morning, Pastor Joe says, Jeff. I said, what? Don't, don't send me any text or anything like at 1130 at night anymore. He said, you don't know what that is. I said, oh, I, I never really thought about it. Yeah, that late at night, that's not a good call. So, but... Uh, fortunately, it wasn't at night when I got the call from my daughter-in-law, Janelle. Uh, Janelle said, Jeff, you know, I could, I could kind of hear the urgency in her voice. Can you, can you come to Baltimore? Jay's really sick. I'm going to take him to the emergency room. This was two years ago. I said, sure, Janelle, I, I'll do that. I packed an overnight bag. Teresa was on one of her trips to London with, with Marissa. And uh, no problem. I packed an overnight bag. She says, can you bring my mom, too? I said, sure. So I picked up Nancy. I headed off to Baltimore. Went directly to the hospital. She had gotten Jay to the hospital already. And little did I realize how sick Jay really was. Um, you know, we got some nurses here. He, he had encephalitis meningitis. And, and it was in his uh, spinal cord, in his spine. And it was affecting his brain. And uh, they, they didn't know why. Now, he was in a hospital outside of Johns Hopkins, because he's down close to Baltimore. And... Uh, the, the message that I have when you walk into the room, you know, we kind of went on this walking tour uh, with Jesus, and that's why I've ended it with this. <clears throat> so when I went into the room, um, <laughs> we, were, we were surrounded by a bunch of Jay's police officers. And uh, now they, these are kind of a rough crowd because they, they are in the heart of Baltimore, and it's, it's, it's a war zone, literally. Jay never was deployed. He was in the Army. He never got deployed, but he definitely did his deployment in Baltimore. Well, he was in there, and all these guys are around there, and uh, a little intimidating. The nice nurse was there. She was, she was a young nurse, good-looking, and, and it's like, oh, whenever she entered the room, it's like, guys, just quit. <laughs> she was almost intimidated to go there. 
But Jay would be laying there, he'd be talking with the guys, talking with me, talking with Janelle, and then all of a sudden, he would just stop, and he would arch himself up like this, and he would just say, Dad, 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 Dad. And I, I couldn't tell if he was in pain um, or what he was doing, but uh, I would just go over him, and I would just pray. You know, I had all these guys just kind of looking at me. He's like, what is he doing? You know, and I, in, in the song, and I would start to sing when you walk into the room, and, and I would sing over him, you know, and then finally he would settle down, and he'd kind of look at me. You know, I had a tear in his eye, and he'd say, oh, thank you, Dad. You know, and then I'd walk out of the room into the hallway and lose it. <laughs> and it was that way for a couple of, uh, for that whole night into the day. And finally me and said, hey, Jeff, uh, we've really, there's nothing else we can do here for him. We need to get him to Johns Hopkins, uh, the main hospital, so we can find out what's going on with him. Because they didn't really know. So, you know, we took an ambulance ride that, that uh, Sunday night. And uh, that overnight bag that I packed um, was <laughs> all I had for like a month. <laughs> I was there almost a whole month in the hospital with my son. And thank God he was healed. Um, you know, I'm not going to get into the details of what happened then. I do want to, you know, kind of do a shout out to uh, Pastor Joe Lazurik. He came down to visit us uh, when Jay was in the hospital. Joe Gerhardt came up uh, from their vacation and stopped, and, and Mike Nepley came too to, to visit us. And and uh, but you know, I just prayed to God that you know, just heal my son. You know, we've all got sons and daughters, or we are sons and daughters. And but if you're a father and you've got your son or your daughter laying there, <laughs> I can totally feel for you that, you know, it's like, I don't want Jay to be doing that. I want that to be me. Just take, take my place. I want to take his place. And that's so much what I wanted to do. So, but that's um, when you walk into the room. I, that song just sticks with me. Whenever we sing it up here, um, I can't get through it. Because uh, it just, just reminds me so much uh, of that time. But, but God is good. You know, God is, you know, Jay is, is healed. I believe he's healed. They, they say that he has lupus. Um, and for like a 28, 29-year-old male, that's like, what? <laughs> kind of unheard of. That's why they couldn't figure out what was wrong with him when they were at Johns Hopkins. But he's watching his diet and he's doing well. And uh, just keep on praying for him. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, God is good. But in relation to the healing here, I believe he is healed. And we just need to pray that. But I believe our church here is a healing church. You know, we pray for healing. And uh, um, <laughs> you know, it's just good to, to, to kind of practice this discipline here, just being quiet. I'm going to wrap this up here because God is good. So we've got the five points, you know. Are you convinced that God is walking in the beginning? Do you, are you convinced that he created the heavens and the earth? Do you experience God in the cool of the morning? You know, we need to have that discipline of just spending time with him. Number three is, does your face shine? Are you going to draw people to him? You know, Jesus said, I will draw people to me. And, and they were drawn to him are you counting on him for protection you know in the time of trouble we need to count on him for protection and number five do you believe do you have faith that he has that healing touch so those are the five points we have if I could ask Sarah to come up and, and play the piano here for a few minutes You know, we just lost a, a great evangelist in Billy Graham, and uh, <clears throat> Ravi Zacharias was paying a tribute to him as I, I found it on the internet. And uh, Billy Graham, one of his messages in his early years, um, had fallen flat. The 
congregation, yeah, you know, kind of, yeah, that was an okay message. And Billy Graham went to his mentor. You know, all young pastors have mentors, correct, Kevin? And he asked him, he said, well, what do you think? What, what happened to my message? What was missing? And his mentor said, Billy, he said, you didn't get to the cross of Jesus Christ. You didn't get to the invitation. You didn't get to the cross of Jesus Christ. You didn't get to the invitation. So if we could just all stand. I'm, I'm going to give you the invitation right now. The cross of Jesus Christ. You know, I, again, as I look out at, you know, you are all my family here. And, and most of the people that, I, that I'm seeing, I, I think we are all saved. We are all Christians here. But if there's anyone here that, that has doubt, that has any doubt that Christ is in your life, um, just make that, just make that your, your choice right now. Just ask Jesus into your heart so that you can just carry Christ in you. And that you can have that radiance so that you can share with people. And you can have that hope. Because Jesus is in the room this morning. Amen? He's walking in this room this morning. He's working on people's lives. Let me send you off with Ephesians 5, verses 1 and 2. It says, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love, just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma.